So this strange looking animal is a lamprey. Lampreys are in the phylum chordata, the subphylum vertebrata, and in the class Petromyzontida. We're going to start by looking at the external anatomy of this animal. It's a marine animal, so it, it swims in the water. And just to orient you, this is the, the head down here and the caudal end or the tail down at this side. So one thing that's characteristic of lampreys is that they have uh, two fins on the dorsal surface, so along the back. We have the anterior dorsal fin here and the posterior dorsal fin here, anterior, because of course it's, it's closer to the head. We can also see, I'll just zoom in a little bit here so it's a little more clear, there's an external nostril located at the top of the head, and that's this little opening right here. And that opens into an olfactory sac inside, which is obviously used um, for smelling things. There's also a pair of eyes. So there's one on either side of the head. There would have been an eye right here and one on the other side. There's no lids on these eyes, um, but they are fairly large for the size of the animal. The other thing that we can see on the outside here along the, the sides of the anterior end are the external gills, so or the external gill slits, I should say. So these are these slit light slit-like structures here are the openings to the gills which would be located on the inside. So those are the gill slits. I flipped the animal over, so this is the underside of the animal here, to show you the mouth. So the mouth, uh, it, it doesn't have a jaw. There's no, there's no real sort of top or bottom. There's no jaw here. There's really just an opening. And the opening is lined with these uh, Little, they sort of look like little tentacles, really. Those are called sensory papillae. So the mouth is lined with these sensory papillae, and as the name implies, it's it's used to, to feel around. Um, these animals are, are actually parasitic. They they use this strange mouth, you can see it's, it's sort of round and, and suction shaped, uh, to latch onto the sides of larger animals. And then they feed off of uh, the body fluids of their hosts, so they're, they're parasitic animals. And how do they get at the food, you ask, with this, you know, this looks like a pretty wimpy little, little mouth. I'm just going to open this up so we can peek inside to look at those teeth on the inside. The mouth is actually quite fierce. And in just a second, I'm going to show you um, a sectioned or cut specimen so that we can get a better look at those teeth. So here's our lamprey cut in half. Just to orient you, here's the dorsal surface up here, this is the ventral surface, and this is all the stuff going on on the inside. Um, you'll note that this animal has been injected with some different colored latex, um, that's just to allow certain structures to be visible. Um, just note that that's obviously not how the animal would look in life. So we'll start at this end. We were just talking about the mouth and how this animal feeds, it, it, its parasitic uh, lifestyle. So this is the opening of the mouth down here. And again, it's lined with these sensory papillae. So these are little protuberances um, that it uses to feel what it's doing. And then on the inside of the mouth are all of these uh, wicked, spiny, sharp, hard, pointy teeth. So the teeth are used to scrape off skin and scales so that it can access uh, the body fluid fluids of the animal that it's attached to. Sounds pleasant, doesn't it? So the food enters the mouth and it then has to get past a tongue. So here's the little tongue right here, okay, up near the top of the mouth and it actually also has spines and, and horns on it as well so it's also a pretty wicked little structure. Food then um, passes past the tongue into this cavity called the pharynx. So this is the pharynx right here, okay, this tube. And then the pharynx branches. There's a dorsal branch up here, so dorsal closer to the back, and a ventral branch down here. If it's food, it follows the dorsal branch. So it comes up along this way, and that eventually turns into an esophagus, which empties into an intestine, which eventually empties out into an anus. It's kind of hard to see these things um, on this structure. It's a pretty small little tube, and um, there is no stomach. That's, that's a fairly primitive feature of this particular animal. Um, but just know that those, those structures exist, even though we won't be able to see them. Now, 
if it's water that's em entering this animal's mouth, you'll recall that this is a, a marine organism, so it's a swimming organism, so it of course uh, must extract oxygen from the water that it lives in. So it can bring water in through the mouth, again past the tongue, through the pharynx. This time it goes to the ventral junction of the pharynx and it comes down here into what's called the respiratory tube and you may see something that looks sort of familiar there's these openings all along the inside of this respiratory tube and these are of course the internal gill slits okay you'll recall we saw the external gill slits on the outside these are the internal gill slits on the inside and if i pop my probe in there and stick it all the way through you'll note that my probe does in fact come out the external gill slit. So of course this is where oxygen exchange, gas exchange takes place. Now you may be wondering, well, what if this animal is, is feeding? How does it deal with the fact that everything sort of is going through the same tube? Well, that's a really good question actually, because if the animal is feeding, it's not able to get water and therefore oxygen um, into its respiratory tube. So it can actually compensate by pumping water and therefore oxygen in and out directly through the gill slit. So that's a muscular action that it can perform sort of as a backup just in case its mouth happens to be full. So let's talk uh, briefly about some of the sensory structures in this animal. You'll recall when we looked at the external anatomy, we saw the nostril up near the top. So here's the little nostril right here, okay? That opens up into the uh, olfactory bulb, which is this roundish bit right here. So that's where the smelling takes place. Now closely associated with this sensory structure is the brain. This is the brain located right here, this little roundish or oval sort of region. And then the brain, if we we can see that it narrows down here to this little tiny channel, which passes down along the length of the animal, and that of course is the spinal cord. So that's the nervous system of this animal, and does obviously then have a, a central nervous system. There is a brain located up at the top. Now below the uh, the spinal cord, so just below this, we can see this broader sort of cartilagey looking structure right here, that's the notochord. So the notochord is a feature that's retained from its larval stage, which you may have noted if you were looking at a larval version of this animal on a microscope slide. So we've got the notochord here, and there's also quite a lot of cartilage in this animal. We can see uh, here's some cartilage up here. It's this firm looking stuff. There's more cartilage all up in here. And between the cartilage and the notochord, that's what provides the main structural support of this animal. So we don't have bones or anything like that in this case. This, this is not a bony animal, um, but it does compensate for that with these internal structural support mechanisms, the cartilage and the notochord. The other things that we can see, and again, you may have noticed similar structures uh, in the larval stage, is we can see some of the muscles running along both the top and the bottom of the animal. So you can see some of the lines running all down here. There's more nice clearly visible down here and up here at this other end. Okay, this is all muscle tissue. So you can see there's a lot of muscle here which is used to propel the animal through the water and it allows it to control its body movements.